In the last video, we arrived in Seoul, the capital of South Korea, and started exploring the city. Today, we take a trip to the most militarized border zone in the world, the DMZ. Today, we're taking the tour to the DMZ, that's the demilitarized zone, four kilometer strip between South Korea and North Korea. This is the start point of the tour. Uh, the tour guide's just gone to buy the tickets uh, because the tour is controlled by the South Korean military, so you have to get permission to go inside the DMZ. So we're just waiting here to get our tickets. And you can also get coffee here and food. So they recommend that you get that just now because there's not much availability later for that or for the toilets. So we're going to get some food. It has a tornado. Tornado, tornado potato. Because it looks like a tornado. And I have a spicy pepper hot dog. Mm, that's good. And I got an espresso cup. These female figures represent the Korean women who were used by the Japanese military as comfort women or sex slaves before and during the Second World War. Korea had been a Japanese colony for 35 years before being liberated at the end of World War II and divided by the Soviet Union and the United States into two occupation zones. Each zone formed its own government in 1948, both claiming to be the sole legitimate government over all Korea, which led to the Korean War starting in 1950. The combat ended in 1953 with an armistice agreement and the creation of the demilitarized zone, although the two countries are still technically at war. The conflict displaced millions of people, separating families, some of whom are still looking for each other. This is the Freedom Bridge, where the prisoners of war could uh, come out of North Korea. This railway line was built to connect Seoul by rail all the way to London. But while the border between the two Koreas remains closed, the line is disconnected, making all land travel out of South Korea impossible. So this train was delivering war supplies, but also there were uh, war refugees hanging off the train, but as he was driving the train, they were one by one falling off. Now it was time to pass the military checkpoint and enter the DMZ. Soldiers boarded the bus and checked all our passports before allowing us to pass through. Please kindly help them. Just point out your name on the list and show them the first page, the photo page of your passports. In the front, you can find the liver that's called the Imjin liver. It's flew from the North Korea to Han liver's home. And tens of years ago, North Korea defector used to swim, but not anymore. Nowadays, we have radar everywhere, so we can detect. So uh, nowadays, North Korea defector go to the other country like China or the Russia, and then they can come, uh, they can come to the South Korea. But in this case, they need local, and it's very expensive. Normally, North Korea cannot afford it, so they have to work five to ten years at the other country, and then eventually they can stay in the South Korea. So for now, we have a twenty-seven thousands of the North Korea defector live in South Korea. And now we are taking the number one national road. This road connects to North Korea, and this road is the longest road in Korea, finishing by five hundred nine kilometers. You can also find the mountain that's called the Pola Mountain. And top of the mountain, we can find the observatory. Our next time, we go there, the Pola Sun Observatory. On the left side, you can take the Kaesong Pool Gate. You can take both of the Kaesong Pool Gate. So, in the front, there's the Kaesong Pool Gate, the way to go to the North Korea city. And from Kaesong Pool Gate to Kaesong City, the 15 kilometers apart. On the left side, you can take photo of the Kaesong Pool Gate. Okay, and the, in the front, soon you can find the blue line on the road. Please find the blue line. That's the original sound of limited line. When we open the infiltration tunnel and the observatory to the public, we remove the original sound of limited line. So when we cross the one, we pass the blue line, it means you're in the DMG area. So the, out of the window, you can find the blue line. We cross the blue line. Oh, yeah. Now you're in the DMG area. So. So this is the old observatory. Yep, it's warmed up. 
So this is the observatory and over there is North Korea. But it's kind of hazy today. I not see very much. Hopefully they'll clear up a little bit. <laughs> This is what it would have looked like, clearly. There are still landmines there. So this monorail uh, used for going down to the tunnel um, makes it a little bit easier than that long steep walk. So yeah, so that's an idea of what the entrance to the tunnel looks like. Oh, it's coming up. So we did it. Uh, we've just been down the third tunnel. Uh, that's why we're probably a little bit red and sweaty looking and a little bit out of breath. <laughs> um, so you're not allowed to take your any devices down there. No, photog no photography, nothing allowed. Um, so we left everything in the lockers here. Uh, so it's quite a steep tunnel down um, and a, quite a steep ascent. So um, it took us about 27 minutes to do the whole thing down and back. Um, yeah, and the only souvenir that we have is coal powder so when the cuts when the tunnel was discovered um, the North Koreans claimed that it was a coal mine so they put coal powder on the ceiling so that it would look like it had been a coal mine but they found no evidence of, of coal there so <laughs> it was clearly an infiltration tunnel. Since July 2023 the JSA or Joint Security Area where you could actually step foot into North Korea has been closed to tourists so this border crossing is actually fake. What they said in the video was really nice about the fact that like although this area obviously is divided between the two countries, wildlife in this area lives peacefully and in harmony together. Hardly any food traffic other than the tourists in the specific areas, but the rest of the area is amazing. Like, earlier on we saw eagles. Like, There's like seven, eight eagles just flying over the observatory, that was just amazing. But like the rest of the wildlife, they said because um, the area has just been left, you know, it's not been you know, no infrastructure here. Mm. The wildlife is just free to live in harmony with each other, uh, not being scared away. Um, so yeah, we're an example for our humans, eh? And the left side, you can find the unification release, our next uh, our last stop. And as you can see, they have no big building, only the school area and the, uh, and the school building, small houses and the farming area. And this area known for the three things, mostly rice, so this is the last stop on the tour. This is the reunification village, uh, and they they sell local products. They they farm soy soybeans a lot here, so they do a soybean ice cream, which is vegan. So Phil's excited, and we got some honeycomb, honeycomb. which I think goes well together. I think so. Yeah. Hmm. That's great sweet. Nice. Yeah, so that's the actual village up there on the hill, which you used to be able to visit. Why did they say they've stopped the visits there? I don't know, but I would imagine that it wouldn't be very fair for these retired soldiers mm. to go and live there and be in peace and then be surrounded by tourists or something. Yeah. I don't think I would, you know, if it was me, I wouldn't want that. Let them retire in, in peace. Oh, 
Next time, we're exploring more of the old town of Seoul, including some of its beautiful palaces and traditional Hanok villages, as well as trying street food. Join us then!